All right, everybody, hello. Um, I am going to try and show you how to use Lix today. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is download it. You can just go to Lix.com. Um, maybe it's not Lix.com. I don't know. Just Google search Lix. Um, it'll come up as a download, and you can go through and download it. Um, it might take a while. It took me probably like an hour and a half, two hours on my computer. Um, don't know why. It's not that big of a file, but it, it takes a while sometimes. Uh, maybe you'll get lucky and it won't for you. Um, but so once you have it all downloaded and stuff, um, you'll open up on this screen. Um, and the first thing you're going to want to do is just do a new document. Um, and the first time you do that, you're going to want to change some stuff. So you're going to want to go into Documents here and then Settings. Um, and the first thing that you want to change, you want to make sure your document is an article. Uh, Lix has some weird like preset settings. So uh, first do an article. Um, then we're going to want to come down here into Page Layout. Make sure that's U.S. letter um, and portrait. Um, go to page margins. Make sure that you put one inch for all of these. It's originally going to be like, I think it's five centimeters or something. So make sure you change it to one and to inches. Um, and then the last thing that you're wanna, gonna want to do is go down here to float placement um, and click here definitely. Um, and after that, you can save as document defaults and then just close that out. And so now your Lix should be okay. So the reason that I like to use Lix over Word is I just think it's a little bit faster than Word. Um, if you're good in Word, it's really probably not that much different. Um, there's a couple other things that Lix offers, like it'll automatically do table of contents, table of all your tables it'll automatically do, all your figures it'll automatically do, um, kind of stuff like that that make it a little easier to format than in Word. Um, but no automatic citation machine in Lix, which is one kind of downfall, but you guys don't have to worry about that for a long time, which is nice. So um, I'm just going to kind of go through here and kind of create like a sample document, show you how to use everything, show you all the shortcuts that I like, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I guess I'll use um, some kinetic equations to do that, right? That's the class we're in. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call this... Lix review, um, and then to change text, you can go up here, and I'm going to make that a title. So now I have Lix review, and I'm going to say Patrick Nelson. Um, go down here, and I'm going to say author. So then I have that all set up. So now I can just start to do some reviews. So let's start with hmm, what should we start with? Well, we'll start with equations. So what I like to do is I like to have sections. Um, so I can go through here. And you can, um, basically this is how you change, like, layouts of your text almost. Um, so I like to go down here um, and just select what it is. Um, the ones with the stars next to it are unnumbered, like you can see, and the ones with the no stars are uh, numbered. So I like to do sub-subsections. I think that looks the best, um, but I usually my, do mine unnumbered here. All right. So, to type equations, press the shortcut, um, control, plus shift, plus N. So, I press control, shift, N, um, whoops, already messed up, control, shift, N. Um, if you're on a Mac, I think all these will be command, I'm doing all this on a Windows, um, so that pops up this little like blue thing right here that you can start to do some equations. So let's say, start with a CSTR, press enter, go into control shift M, and it brings this up. So the one thing that's different is that this is all latex um, text, um, equation formatting, I guess. So everything you do, you type in your backslash, that's the one like above the enter key on a keyboard, and then you can type in a bunch of commands for it. So like... Look how many commands there is. There's just a ton. So we'll start with a basic volume equation. So we'll do V is equal to, and we'll do backslash frac. That stands for fraction, um, which comes up here. And then we'll do F. Um, and then you can do underscore, or I guess, yeah, like shift and the dash button, uh, and underscore essentially. Um, okay, not minus F. And then underscore again, A, all over minus R, A, and there's that, your first equation that you have. Um, 
one thing that can be kind of funky, um, I like to space out of everything, so if I have like another one where I'm doing V is to um, frac, um, after frac I press space, that makes the frac come, um, and then I type whatever I'm typing up here, I usually press the down arrow key and then go here, and then you can press space again, and that'll get you outside of the fraction, and then press space one more time, and that'll get you outside of the equation. One tricky thing that comes, so you can see like when I'm inside of the equation, I have these little like pink bars right here. That shows where I am. Um, so if I go outside of that and I press backspace, it'll just delete the entire thing, um, which is kind of a pain. Um, redos and undos are the same as in Word, so Control or Command Z um, redoes stuff. Um, Command Y um, to redo stuff, or Control Z undoes, command, or Control Y redoes, um, so that kind of stuff. So I can go through here and I can just show you some fun shortcuts that I use. Frac is a big one, obviously. Um, times, I use uh, times a lot. Um, I know some of my friends use C dot, um, that puts the dot. Um, you can do like right arrow for like equations and stuff like that. Um, equilibrium is something weird. It's like double barb, something or other. If you can't find something, just um, just go on and you can just Google search like how to do X in latex. And most of the time it'll come up pretty easily. But yeah, so everything you do is just backspace and then um, whatever you want to do, you can do like equilibrium. Eh. I don't remember what almost equal to is, but there's there's just a bunch of stuff. It'll show you all down here. Um, oh, symbols. That's one great thing that this is for. Um, eventually, you guys will get to a variable called residence time. Um, and that is tau. Where on Word, wow, really messing up here. On Word, you'd have to go insert symbol and you'd have to search for it. So, like, there's tau, there's, um, like, theta, just... Really, anything you can come up with, you can capitalize it, and that'll give you the capital one instead. Um, when you get into some stuff that is very symbol heavy, um, really, really nice to just be able to do that instead of insert um, symbols on Word. Um, let's see, what else is there? Um, for figures and stuff like that, um, one of the easiest things that looks does that I like the best is I like to go insert and then float and then you can choose what kind of stuff so if you have a table or a figure or whatever so you can do your figure and this is like my figure um, and then you click back up here um, above the figure name and so you can go insert uh, graphics I don't know let's see if I have anything here um, go into process control that's a picture. Okay, and so there it goes. It inserts graphics in here. Um, one of the things that's kind of annoying about Lix is that it automatically does it to the left. Um, so you can go to, you can click where you're at, edit, paragraph settings, center, okay. And that works anywhere, I believe. So you can go here, you can go edit, paragraph settings, um, most of it's default, but you can change that to center, whatever that'll work. Um, and so now you can click on these to open them or close them or whatever. And now what Lix will do is it'll keep track of all your figures. So the next time I do um, a figure, if I go insert, float, figure, figure two, um, kind of just keeps track of stuff, which is nice. Um, another way for a table, um, it'll start at table one. And then you go insert, um, table, and then you do that. Um, tables are nice down here. It'll come up with things. So if you need to add a row, add a column, delete, all that kind of stuff, that'll all be down there. Um, trying to think what else. So for, um, for homework, I think that it's really nice, um, just to be able to typeset very fast. Uh, so for example, let's, um, we can pretend like we're starting, um, your guys' next homework. Solutions, can't let you see those. 